Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education, Public Speaking, The Final Exam, narrated by Frank Avella. Special thanks to the public speaker, Nelson Andrade. In this presentation, we will cover everything you would ever need to learn from an entire semester of a public speaking course. Improve your life by improving your ability to speak in public. Now, let's begin with a look at the importance of public speaking. First off, public speakers are masters of communication and influence. The ability to influence and communicate is an essential component of effective leadership. There is an innate drive in all of us to one day be a leader, and that will not happen unless we're able to speak to large groups of people. Public speakers make an impact on the world around us. Speakers are able to get their message out to the masses in a clear and easily understandable way. When that message gets out, there is a ripple effect and no telling how far a message can reach. As a person develops their ability to speak in public, they are likely to become more confident in themselves. Research has shown that high self-esteem is found in outgoing individuals with good public speaking skills. There are tremendous opportunities for anyone willing to master the craft of public speaking. You'll create networking opportunities, earn credibility through your presentations, and build up a reputation as an expert in your field. In the next section, we'll dive in and take a look at the organization of speech or a lecture. A typical speech is divided into three parts, beginning with an introduction. One way to begin a speech is with a hook to immediately gain your audience's attention. The hook is an attention getter. Early on, speakers should aim to make a connection with their audience. The audience must understand how the speech is relevant to their careers and lives. In the introduction, public speakers offer their qualifications, certifications, background, and accomplishments as a way to gain credibility from the crowd. The most important aspect for the introduction is the thesis statement, which is essentially a declaration of what you want to accomplish from your speech. To conclude your introduction, a quick preview of what is to be covered throughout the speech helps the audience get an idea of the big picture. The introduction is then followed by the main body of the speech. In the body, you want to include your main points. If giving a speech on fitness, consider what are the two or three main takeaways you want for your audience. Each main point of the body should be followed up with supporting information. Don't overdo it. Just a few supporting points is enough. You don't want to drown out the main point. This process repeats itself. Continue with another main point and then follow up that main point with more supporting points. The last part of the speech is the conclusion. Review all the important information mentioned earlier in the speech. End the speech with your final statement. This statement should be direct and make a lasting impact. Whenever I've given a keynote speech at any educational conference, I always left time to take questions. In my experience, it built a rapport and was often the reason audience members solicited my services for their schools. Lastly, be sure to give your contact information to the audience. How else do you expect to build your network? Continuing in the presentation, the next topic is the use of language. We'll look at several tips to improve language use in speech. Be specific. Orators must be precise in their speech and the words they use. Choose your words wisely and use the best fitting word for each situation. It is recommended to avoid jargon when given speeches. Jargon may confuse the audience and undermine the effectiveness of your speech. It may alienate some. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of public speakers attempting to use a fake accent in order to try and bond with the audience of a certain background, such as a fake Southern accent. Always be authentic in your dialect. Certain words have greater effect on the audience than others. Onomatopoeia, for example, will tell the audience what is happening by helping the reader hear the sounds of the words they reflect. Boom, honk, hiss. Skilled public speakers will frequently vary their sentence to add some diversification to the speech. Ever so often, add an exclamation or question to your speech. If you're trying to explain an important piece of information, certain teaching strategies such as using compare and contrast may 
help highlight your point. Consider using metaphors, similes, and classification methods to help the audience understand complex material. And most importantly, be clear and concise in your speech. The last thing you want to do is write a speech where you ramble on and lose the audience's attention. Use easy to understand words, keep your audience's attention, and don't complicate your speech. Next, we'll discuss some general guidelines and effective strategies for public speaking. The most important and perhaps most obvious tip is to first practice your speech. No one, I repeat no one, has ever mastered anything without first practicing. It's best to practice your speech in front of a mirror because it discourages over-reliance on notes. The best public speakers interact with their audience in a positive way. This builds a rapport and increases the likability of the speaker. Excellent communication uses repetition as a method to drill home important points of the speech. The more a statement is repeated, the more important it is recognized by the brain. Speakers look to find common ground with the audience in an attempt to strengthen their own relevance to the topic and the crowd. It's easy to find common ground among similar groups and professions. It's necessary to break down complicated topics into more easily understandable concepts. The goal is to describe the complicated information in as simple a sense as possible without losing the overall meaning of the topic. Breaking down complex material can be quite difficult. The speaker must have a mastery of content knowledge to be able to break down those complex ideas. And in an effort to gain the audience's trust and favor, talk a little bit about yourself and your personal journey. Where did you come from? Provide some personal anecdotes. These personal anecdotes will help the audience see you as a part of their inner circle. And that leads to the next topic of this public speaking presentation, which is getting to know the audience. As a speaker, understanding exactly who you are speaking to and the reason for their attendance is vital to delivering a great speech. If speaking on a particular topic, there may be an expectation of prerequisite knowledge for the audience. For example, I gave an advanced Google technology presentation and I require the audience be certified level one and level two Google educators. Demographics can be used to determine audience preferences, buying habits if you're selling a service in your speech. If say 90% of the audience is women, gear your speech towards women then. It's recommended to gather as much information as possible. Today we can do that very easily through technology. Send out a Google form. Do an email blast questionnaire. Public speakers need to read the audience. It can make a difference between a flat speech or an inspirational one. Look at their facial expressions. See them in the crowd. Are they paying attention? It's best to provide the audience with a feedback survey. You can hand out sheets of paper or go electronic. Either way, both positive and negative feedback will help with your development. Right now I want to take a quick second and ask that you please subscribe to this channel. Check the description for resources and a PowerPoint presentation. Also, I'd appreciate it if you would hit that like button for me. Now, let's get back to the presentation. The next section of this presentation is on topic research. Brainstorm different ideas. When brainstorming, you want as many ideas as possible. Build one idea off, an, off of another idea. Solicit ideas from your friends and family as well. Even wild ideas are acceptable, but try to stay on topic. Eventually, you'll want to narrow your focus on a specific topic. Being able to focus on one particular area of study demonstrates knowledge. When incorporating actual research studies into the speech, be sure the research is peer-reviewed. Peer-reviewed studies are critiqued by, by other experts in the field. The library has a plethora of free information in the form of resources and services. The easiest way to find peer-reviewed articles for free is by using one of the library's databases. Another option is to connect with a field expert directly. We live in a global age of information where anyone can connect with someone anywhere in the world. Try using social media, Twitter, whatever. Search the internet for graphic organizers and visual aids to incorporate into the speech. Also search Creative Commons for images free of copyright. Make sure that the visual aid aligns with the overall message. Direct quotes are useful for describing specific concepts. Any interesting stories or anecdotes related to this topic of discussion should be included. When writing a speech or creating your notes, you'll need to summarize the information. Expert speakers 
are essentially paid to summarize, which is to discern the most important ideas and ignore the irrelevant ones. We'll get into more of this later on. The next topic is perhaps the most important, which is to overcome the fear of public speaking by remaining calm. Now, the quickest way to lose your cool during a speech is to not know what to say next. That's why it's so important to absolutely know the speech like the back of your hand. Practice the speech over and over and memorize the specific phrases and ideas related to keywords on your note card. Research shows that deep breathing helps reduce stress and calm the nerves. Deep breaths increase the supply of oxygen to the brain. Breathe in through your nose to fill your lungs with as much air as possible. Another strategy to help decrease the fear is to use positive imagery. Imagery can stimulate changes in the body by decreasing the heart rate and blood pressure. Simply imagine yourself giving a perfect speech. Envision your path to success with all the little details. Focus on the material. You're likely very knowledgeable about your topic of speech, so be confident. Many speakers fear moments of silence during their presentations. Moments of silence may be used to create dramatic effects. Silence allows the audience to absorb information. Continuing, we'll take a look at the next component of this micro course, which is to familiarize yourself with the setting. If possible, visit the location where you're going to deliver the speech ahead of time. This is important for a number of reasons, including knowing where you can set up props, you can get a feel for the room, know the size. While at the speech setting, the first thing you'll want to do is do a quick tech check, meaning make sure you can log into the computer, the audio is working, the microphone, podium, clip-ons. I've done several different virtual presentations on technology for various school districts and I'd have to prepare beforehand by sending out meeting links and ensuring everyone had access. I'd also check my camera and microphone. The size of the room will affect the way you sound. For example, larger rooms will cause echoes. With larger rooms, you'll have to speak louder and be more animated to make the presence known. With smaller sized rooms, it'll be easier to interact with the audience, ask for their names and where they're from. It'll be easier to get to know them. Take questions. With a small room, your tone doesn't have to be as commanding. I recently attended an education seminar where the speaker told me before that the temperature is best at 74 degrees. Also check for proper lighting, which can reduce eye fatigue and headaches. When speaking to any size audience, all participants must have a line of sight to you, the speaker. They need to see your expressions, your movements, and more of you to get the full experience of the presentation. On to the next topic of public speaking, which is presentation props. An appropriately timed prop can make a great impression on the audience. When choosing this prop, it only makes sense that the prop must be related to the topic of speech. Look for authentic props. The props also have to be large enough for the entire audience to see. The larger the room, the larger the size of the prop. Projectors are helpful for documents and other small sized items. Generally, but not all the time, you'll want the presentation prop to be visually pleasing. Gain the audience's attention. You never want to bring in anything that looks cheap. There is a greater connection to actual physical objects as opposed to viewing images or pictures of objects. Consider a DNA model. For a geology lecture, bring the actual stones, not just the pictures. Consider adding short YouTube videos with presentations. These videos can help the audience wake up. Eventually, they'll get tired from listening to the same voice. A short video provides a change in voice and style. Flip charts may be considered an old school prop for a presentation. Nevertheless, it's still very effective. Flip charts are inexpensive and allow for the presenters to get creative. PowerPoint presentations are quite commonly used as props. They are reliable, easy to share, simple to use, and come off as professional in nature. I've added poster boards to this section as they are an absolute favorite of mine when it comes to presentation props. Poster boards are best used to communicate research in a clear and concise manner. The poster speaks for itself. Let the poster do the talking. The next topic to explore is vocal ability. For any type of public speaker, speech delivery must communicate confidence and preparedness. Volume is created by airflow using your diaphragm. To increase your volume, which you'll have to do often, relax, take deep breaths. 
The key is to have supported breathing. Use your diaphragm and practice deep breathing. Rhythm in speech may be defined as the speaker's pace and style of breaks in speech pattern. Speakers should always avoid speaking in a monotone voice. The pitch voice is essentially how high or low the voice is. High pitch voices, which occur when vocal cords are vibrating too quickly, make the speaker seem unsure of themselves. A low pitch is more authoritative. An articulate speaker is very careful with their words. Words must also be properly spoken with, with correct pronunciations. Articulation conveys confidence and mastery of subject. Next, speaking too quickly is one of the most common faults of public speakers. On this stage, it's natural to talk a little faster because you'll be nervous. Speaking too fast can lead to loss of details and speaking too slow can make the audience feel tired. I've continually mentioned the importance of a properly timed pause in speech. Most skilled speakers use pauses to build tension and captivate listeners. If you're truly passionate about the topic of your speech, the audience will be able to feel that passion through you. Your enthusiasm will transfer from you, the speaker, to the listeners, and they'll subsequently bond with the subject. The next section is body language, an underrated part of public speaking. Nonverbal communication may be more impactful than actual words. Gestures reflect the speaker's inner thoughts. A speaker's unknown thoughts are often expressed through body language. Gestures complement the words spoken and act as an amplifier. A speaker's emotional expression is necessary to enhance the message being provided. Listeners will unknowingly either trust or distrust what the speaker is saying. As a speaker, you'll want to make eye contact with the audience members. Eye contact creates a bond between the speaker and listener. When you look a person in the eye, they're more likely to listen to you and more likely to buy into what you're saying. The rule of thumb when it comes to public speaking is to always dress as well or better than the audience. Ultimately, your appearance will provide nonverbal cues about your personality and financial status. Walking the room during a speaking engagement adds a dynamic element to the presentation. Your physical proximity to the audience members will help build a rapport with the audience. As we continue, we come up to the section on humor and public speaking. Humor can make a speaker more likable, increase the audience's engagement, lighten the mood, and make the speech memorable. When using humor in a speech, you'll want the fun and the jokes to come naturally. A forced joke is doomed for failure. Being naturally funny is an actual skill, and you probably know by now whether you're funny or not. Even if you are funny, you need to make sure your jokes in the speech are funny. Humor can be a double-edged sword, so be careful, be sure, make sure the joke will work. Cultural awareness is needed before telling any joke. Not everything is going to be funny to different groups of people. Any type of humor that may possibly offend the audience should be avoided at all costs. At all costs. Err on the side of caution with this one. Everybody knows the secret of telling a great joke is timing. Build up a little suspense before you hit that punchline. Speaker's delivery of style may just be naturally funny. In the end, you're going to have to feel the audience out. Are they already in a fun mood, or do you have to get them in that mood? However, unknown circumstances may have the audience not up for the jokes at the moment. Continuing through to the latter half of the presentation, the next topic is the art of storytelling. Storytelling is an effective method for teaching and learning because it forms connections between people and ideas. When crafting a great story, a public speaker should consider the four P's, people, place, plot, and purpose. These are the building blocks of any great story. Use them as a framework. In most cases, it's best for the story to also involve you, the speaker. Personalized storytelling is quite effective as it taps into the listener's intellectual understanding. Listeners see themselves in a story and better relate. There should always be a core message. First ask yourself, what message am I trying to get out to my audience with this story? Messages that strike an emotional chord work best. 
Emotional storytelling is about creating a positive emotion for the audience while inserting your points into the story. Express your own emotion while telling the story. And lastly, the most skilled storytellers paint a picture as they tell their own story. Elegantly describe sensory details through colorful words. Plant vivid images in the minds of the audience. Now, with two sections left in the presentation, the next area is the use of note cards. When creating note cards, you'll want to simply write down keywords that represent major thoughts and main ideas. Much like a search engine, the keywords on note cards help identify major content. The most common note card size is 3 by 5 inch. We recommend using this size as it is a small size note card and prevents the speaker from writing too much on the card. When it comes to remembering hard statistics, direct quotes, include them on the note card. These figures and statements are difficult to remember, and they must be correct, so write them down. Ultimately, these note cards should be used as a reference. The worst thing you could do is write your entire speech onto note cards and read directly from the note cards. Simply glance at these cards and use them as a reference. Well, this is the last section, and I want to go over some final thoughts. Public speaking is a great career and amazing talent. Public speakers are one of the highest paid professions in the United States per hour. The best way to get started is to just dive right in and do it. Sign yourself up for an event and speak on a topic. Make mistakes and get better. And speak on a topic that you would like to talk about. The topic should be something in your area of expertise. I am an educator and have spoken at a number of different educational conferences. I found opportunities to speak for these conferences by simply looking them up on the internet. And lastly, you know, the most important thing is that you have a passion for the material, that you have a passion for getting your message out. Anyway, right now I want to say thank you for your time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel, and check the description for a PowerPoint presentation to help you review for this final exam. Have a great day.